Good morning, garden friends. It's Heather at Bush Poppy Farm. And today I am going to show you guys what I got seed-wise at Baker Creek. They introduced their 2023 stuff. And even though I would normally wait, I mean, it's like, you know, early November, mid-November. Normally I would wait until like January or February to order seeds, but um, with supply chain issues and all that kind of stuff, I'm just starting to get all my stuff sooner because uh, it can totally sit around through the holidays. Um Uh, some of this stuff I actually might start in January. It just depends on what it is. But so my Baker Creek seeds. This is not a huge haul, but because uh, I still have a lot of seeds left over from last year. But I wanted to get a few new things. But I wanted to show you first before I even open the package how cool this packaging is. Okay, do you see all that? There's just so many cool things on there. And the same on the back as well. Look at that. <laughs> Just so many cool things. I love it. All right, so let's see what's in this package. I only just ordered this like a week ago and I already forgotten uh, what I ordered because I also placed a Johnny's order. Okay. All right, so a big old packet of seeds here. Let's see what I'm gonna be <laughs> trying to grow next year. Okay, and these are in no order because I just yanked them out of the thing. Okay, so the first one is a black Hungarian pepper. That looks pretty awesome. It says ornamental and delicious Hungarian heirloom pepper, unique black fruit shaped like jalapenos, mildly hot and have delicious flavor. So that'll be yummy. Okay, next one is another pepper. This is, now I've heard so much about this this year. All the folks I follow on YouTube um, were growing it this year and it's supposed to be mighty hot, but really good for hot sauce. So that's why I'm growing it. Sugar Rush Peach. This is a uh, bred by hot pepper prodigy Chris Fowler of Wales. Long peach colored fruits packed with loads of super sweet tropical flavor and the seeds bring a smoky complex heat. I've heard it's actually quite hot. Okay, another pepper. This one is Craig's Grande Jalapeno. Improved jalapeno at uh, developed at Redwood Seeds. Big fat jalapeno that's perfect for making lots of salsa. Thick, flavorful, and fresh. All right, looking forward to that. Okay, so moving into, oh well, here's one more pepper. Uh, this one is sweet chocolate. Flesh is cola red color, very sweet and delicious. Medium sized semi bells ripen very early. I am looking for some earlier peppers because around here, even though we have intense heat in the summer, it's not usually until later. And so it's kind of hard to get peppers in like July. You have to wait till like August and September. So, all right, moving into some flowers. This is a mix of lace flowers. I've never actually grown this particular uh, species before. I'm going to try to pronounce it. Trachymene corulia. Uh, half hardy annual biennial soft clouds of sky blue pale pink creates a gauzy effect in the garden. Plants stand two to three feet tall with sturdy stems. So I'm going to try them for cutting. Um, I'll test them out here at home. Um, but yeah, they're really pretty. I have a feeling they kind of probably make a bit of a mess though. So we'll have to see how that goes. All right, Mizuna. I have not grown this before, but I really like brassicas. This is brassica rapa. Uh, newly developed Japanese heirloom, nutritious purple stems and dark greens make a lovely contrast and the delicate flavor is unparalleled. Adapted to both extreme heat and cold. That's important for me because of our extreme heat. So I'll be able to grow those into the summer. Um, and I got this last year. I continue to get them and I continue to not have them come up for me, but that's my problem. Um, amazing gray poppies. They're just gorgeous. Um, they're, they, they call it Earl Grey Lavender, the color. So pretty. Uh, more poppies. This is Hens and Chicks. Uh, and you can see why. Look at that really cool seed head. All right. Another pepper. This is uh, Etiuda, I'm assuming. That's how you pronounce it. Uh, tasty Polish commercial variety. Sugary, sweet when ripe 
blocky, thick-walled orange fruit is crisp and juicy, reaching a half pound. That's a big pepper. All right, carrots. This is a free free packet, which I love. Uh, Saint Valerie carrot, very old French variety, handsome, a large, bright red, orange, 10 to 12 inch roots, smooth, sweet, and tender. So we'll continue to try carrots. I have carrots growing in the garden right now. We'll just see how they do. The tops look amazing, but mm, we'll see. All right, melons. This is another one I hear about all the time and I've never grown it, but I only have just started having success with growing cucurbits as you saw this year. So this is a Kajari melon. Um, collected by Joseph Simcox in India, an unusual yet beautiful copper red fruit striped with green and cream, very sweet, pale flesh. Looking forward to trying that. All right, more nigella, love in a mist, only because I just, I love nigella, it's easy to grow, it's, salt, it's good for sowing, direct sowing. Um, this is a uh, different, I like, as you know, I like nasturtiums too, and I have a lot of them. And now that I've sown them everywhere, they kind of just keep self-sowing, but I love trying new varieties. And so this is a new one to me, Bloody Martini Nasturtium. So I think that's really pretty. That'll be very dramatic um, in the garden. All right, another poppy, giant rattle poppy. So this is basically just giant poppy pods. Um, you grow them for the pods, not the flower, because the flower itself falls apart uh, within about 24 hours, but the pods last. And like I've said before, each pod has thousands of seeds. And so once you grow them once, uh, you tend to have plenty of seed left over. Okay, moving into, well, here's one more nasturtium, two more nasturtiums. All right, this one is called Alaska Salmon. I actually really like the Alaska series. Um, they have tend to have variegated leaves and I love that look. And this one's Cherry Rose Jewel. I, I think I already have this one, but I still like it. All right, moving into squashes. Apparently I got two packages of this, which I did not intend, but this is Sweet Nut Acorn. Uh, absolutely love sweet winter squashes. Um, this one's filled with naked seeds, um, a a AKA pepitas. So you can cook the seeds as well. Uh, flesh is sweet and creamy. Seeds are free of the tough outer coating that makes pumpkin seeds harder to eat. A multi-purpose no waste crop that should be a staple in every home garden and homestead. So let's keep our fingers crossed. I'm gonna have so much more room out there this year to do all this kind of stuff. And then this is my favorite. I really, really want to be successful in growing this this year because I love these so much. This is honey nut squash. Uh, it's a mini butternut. It is super, super sweet. It has an amazing, um, an amazing texture. It's more like a sweet potato. It is so, so good. And I've made soups. We've eaten them, you know, baked. It's just so good. So I want to grow a whole bunch of those this year. Um, this is a new one that I haven't grown before. This is Dragon Tongue Bean. It's a Dutch heirloom um, and it's a shell bean. So um, we'll be drying those. It's not a fresh eating bean. All right, some hollyhocks. I. <laughs> Haven't had much success with hollyhocks here. I don't know, um, maybe it's where I'm placing them in the garden, I don't know, but I am not giving up. Uh, so this is Alcia rosea, creme de cassis hollyhock. It's very, very pretty. Okay, this one I grew last year and I loved it, so I got more seed. This is the pink dandelion. I know it seems crazy, why would you buy seed for dandelions, but yeah, it's really nice. Um, this is a wildflower from Central Asia and it's a much less prolific member, so it doesn't spread as much. All right, this is a marigold. This is Kilimanjaro white. Really, really pretty. Uh, they're two inch wide flowers, creamy white blooms, and uh, which is really cool because most marigolds, as you know, are yellow or orange. So I'm, I'm looking forward to trying to grow those. All right, then I have this pansy. I really like black pansies. This one's called Black Devil. They're so cool. They are really, uh, this one has a really pretty little yellow eye too. Um, they are so dramatic and I just love them in the garden. You compare them with so many things, but they look like velvet. They're, they're just, you want to touch them. They're amazing and they're edible. All right. Um, Three more flowers. Oh, another nasturtium. This one's called Purple Emperor. I thought that one was really pretty. 
And even though I don't necessarily need more celosia, this one's called Asian Garden. This is not a variety I have grown before. Uh, it's a multi-purpose celosia, so it's, it can be used for cutting, but I think the stems are a little bit shorter than the kind that I usually grow. However, I love that color, so thought I'd try it. Uh, Apricot Cosmos. So I have a client who wants to put a bunch of Cosmos in, in her garden, um, and so I'm going to start a whole bunch of different colors for her and see what she likes. All right, uh, tomato. I know it's weird to buy at this time of year, but I had plenty of tomato seeds left over from last year, plus I bought a few from Johnny's. Uh, but this one looked really cool. It's called Indigo Blue Chocolate. Look at that. Uh, it says, 80 days, indeterminate heirloom, is sweet and juicy with black um, skin. Small slicing tomato averages one to two ounces, and the plant reaches about seven to eight feet tall. Um, Brad Gates, a wild boar farm in California, describes this variety as having a good long shelf life and being sunburn and crack resistant. Seems kind of cool for a dark skinned tomato. So, I know that was rapid fire, but I'm super excited about starting all of those seeds and seeing them grow in the garden. Um, so when the Johnny's order comes in, I'll share that with you as well. And I'll try to put photos on the screen because Johnny's packets don't have uh, pictures on them. like. <laughs> uh, like um, Baker Creek does. If you're interested in looking at what Baker Creek has, they are at, and I'll put the link in the description box, they are at www.rareseeds.com. And uh, yeah, they've got all kinds of really cool stuff. A lot of heirloom varieties and things that you can't really get anywhere else. So that's why it's kind of fun to buy from them. So if you're interested, check them out, even if you just want to peruse. Also uh, worth spending a few bucks on is their seed catalog. It's beautiful. It's like, um, if you're of a certain age, you will remember getting the Sears Roebuck catalog in the mail prior to the holidays and being able to page through it and um, circle all the things you wanted Santa to bring to you if you if you celebrate that way um, or things you might want for Hanukkah or, you know, whatever. So. Um, this to me is kind of the, the equivalent of that. This, this is a, it's a big thick catalog. There are so many gorgeous photos. Um, it's kind of like a, I don't know, it's just fun to page through. Uh, so you might want to grab one, um, <laughs> off of their website as well, instead of just looking at it online. Okay, so that's going to do it for me for this video. Like I said, when the Johnny's order comes in, I'll share those with you. And um, a little later on, I'll share with you the dahlias that we're going to be um, growing this year. Um, I didn't get a huge amount of new tubers because we've saved a lot from, you know, this, this year and years before. Um, but I do have some new ones coming in. So I'll share all of those with you as well. Um, coming up. I think this weekend, or I don't know, it depends on when it arrives. I'm still waiting for the rain barrel to arrive, but I will be filming a video of us setting up the um, water collection system for the greenhouse because we do have a big roof that's on a slant and we can collect all of that water when we do get rain events so that I can use that um, in here in the greenhouse to uh, do everything. Uh, it'll be really nice to not have to bring water over from the hose um, it won't be chlorinated. It'll have, you know, microbes in it. It's just, it's just so much better for your plants. And maybe start perusing some seed catalogs. I know that's generally something we do over the winter. Um, but uh, like I said, with supply chain issues, you might want to start getting your orders in early rather than late. Um, I, these are all, most of these are going to be for personal use. And so the, the seeds that I grow for the farm, I get those wholesale um, from GeoSeed and um, that they come in large amounts, but also that's not for personal use. Um, I'm not supposed to be using those, um, using my wholesale discount for personal use. So I don't. <laughs> so these are all just regular retail. You guys can access that as well. Another great source I like is Florette Seed. Um, I also love Botanical Interest and Annie's annuals seeds as well. So some things to look and check out and uh, let me know in the comments below if you have a favorite seed source that um, I 
didn't mention or maybe not know of. I would love to check those out too. Maybe you have one that's local to you that is um, produces varieties that grow best in your zone and that's super exciting. There is one down in San Diego, San Diego Seed Company, and that's really cool because um, if you can get things that are better adapted to your personal zone, you are much more likely to have great success in the garden. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you have a wonderful time in your garden and I will see you in the next one. Bye.